Welcome back to another episode of the Foodball Show. I am Renata and I'm joined by the Dalai Lama of soccer, Hello. Mr. Simon Allen. Thank you. We also have Foodball Harry. Hello. Hey. And Alexi. Hello, everyone. We are literally six shows in and we still don't have like a word to use before Alexi, and that bothers me thoroughly. But that's not what we're <laughs> here to talk about. We do. You do. We do. I'm a plain and simple guy. <laughs> I'm just, just not in on just the Just Alexi. Secret. The it's real just, Alexi. Yeah. <laughs> just Alexi. The real Alexi. All right, so we're maintaining the same format as last week's show. We're going to be talking about the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup. And for those of you who are first joining us right now in this episode, it's not like every other um, soccer show that you've been watching because we're going to be talking about the different teams that are going to be matched up in the quarterfinals, and I know that all sounds like every other soccer show, but it's not because these three gents have made some predictions um, over the past few weeks, and I am making sure that they are sticking to it. I'm not letting them change anything, and we're talking about their predictions in the next few quarterfinals. Harry and Alexi, you guys have Spain and Argentina. We're on different sides of the border, though, eh? Absolutely. Spain, Argentina, great game, but I see Spain beating them just the same way they did in their friendlies. It wasn't a fluke. Spain has amazing, great young players. And I think we're gonna see Asensio, Isco, their young players come out and show the new era in Spain, and they're gonna beat Argentina. So Jorge Sampo Sampaoli, who is the Argentina manager, he likes playing an attacking style. Granted, in the qualifications, Argentina didn't score as many goals as one would have thought, especially when you consider they had players like Messi, Sergio Aguero, uh, Di Maria and Higuain. That's a phenomenal attacking lineup. To think that they're going to come to this World Cup and not perform, mm -hmm. I highly doubt that. Granted, Spain is a second favorite to win on ESPN's power index, but you know, Argentina fourth, but it's going to be close on and I've got to go with Argentina. Messi, you know, he wants to stake a claim and this is going to be his tournament. So, Simon, how special will this match be? This is going to be very, very, to quote Mary Lou, <laughs> very. very special match. So we've got to go back to, to Madrid, where Argentina played Spain, and mm. it was a friendly, okay? But Spain absolutely thrashed Argentina 6-1. Mm. Now, the gaffer made one mistake by, play, not, by not playing one player. And have yeah. a guess who that was? Who was it, Lexi? It was the great Messi. Right. If Messi was there, it would be, we'd be talking about a different match altogether. And this is a match that I think that a lot of Spain fans will be looking at saying, wait, we can do this. But listen, isn't it the case now that the tikka tikka style of play has been found out? They haven't been playing as well as they did previously. And I think teams are now more used to that style of play. So it, it's not a given. I'll tell you this, who can, who can do a better tikka tikka than, than Spain or Argentina? I say Spain these days. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. So look, I'll go back to what you said about that great amount of players you named. And I'll mention a few others. Icardi, Dybala. You know, I mean, you missed those two guys. So Argentina does have a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. However, I think Messi's train has left the station, mate. You know? <laughs> Uh, and um, they, he had his chance in 2014, and yeah. I think it's done. What you know? station did it leave? Like Putney Bridge? He left no. Barcelona a long time ago, <laughs> and he is going to be leaving after Spain beat him in, in the quarterfinals in this game. So, uh, great match, but I think Spain's going to take it. You know, Argentinians play for the country and not their 11 players, so with 40 million Argentinas back of them, I'm sure they're going to come on top. Listen, it wasn't a fluke, you know, Absolutely. that Spain beat Argentina. It wasn't a fluke at all. So you have Uruguay and Argentina. Yeah, but it's the same result. Argentina's going to win. Okay. Uh, Uruguay has a great team. And we, we, can't, we can't fault them. They're going to have a very good World Cup. They're going to get to this stage. Uh, but the one thing about World Cups, you can literally throw away mm -hmm. any sort of preconceptions, any notions that you have about a certain team, because that radically alters and sometimes changes when the World Cup happens. You can remember past World Cups where mm. people will say, ah, Brazil's not going to win, but then they won. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, well, France is going to do really well on repeat, and they tank. Yeah. You cannot count out legends, right? And we've said it a hundred times. All eyes will be on Messi. He is going to cement that legendary status Absolutely. at this World Cup. So you don't agree with Harry that the train has left the station for Messi? Listen, the only train that's left the station is probably the one at Charing Cross and <laughs> And I wasn't on it, let me tell you. I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what that, I don't know. No, absolutely not. He's a legend. He's going to perform. And I've got to tell you, 
all eyes will be on Messi. We've been talking about it for what, mm -hmm. five, six shows. Messi, Messi, Messi. I know you guys are Cristiano's, but all eyes will be on him and he will perform and he will not disappoint. Another few predictions uh, for the next quarterfinal. Alexi, I think you had <coughs> Germany and Belgium. It's a fact that Belgium have only been in Germany four times. The last mm -hmm. time in 1954, which is a heck of a way back. So it's, uh, they're due for an upset? Potentially. All right. <laughs> you know, I don't think we, any of us were born in 1954. No. So I think I might have been. You know, Harry... Uh, Again. <laughs> <laughs> Harry said a lot of good points about the strengths of mm -hmm. Belgium in the previous show. And to add to it, I think they're everyone's dark horse. They've got a solid team. Whether they can gel together and play at their best against the best, which is always the killer thing, we'll have to wait and see. So Harry, do you think Germany really is that strong? Yeah, they have an amazing squad, amazing mm -hmm. team, and they've always performed very well in every World Cup. But Harry, you predict that England will beat Germany in the quarterfinal. Again, another great match, but okay. I think England's going to get a lot stronger as they progress into the World Cup. They're going to upset the champions, the reigning champions. Like they did in two World Wars and in the World Cup of 66. <laughs> <laughs> so 1945 and 1966. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> no, you can't uh, say that. No. Yeah. No, no. That is such Two a... World Wars of World Okay, World okay, let's, okay, all right. Like, I mean, like, England beat uh, Germany in 1966. Harry Kane just ended the season on a great note. And I think Germany's going to forget that they have Jamie Vardy, Rashford. They're going to focus on mm. Kane. Uh, but, you know, look out for those younger players and the rest of the English squad. Look, England have a strong squad. Daly Ali with Keane playing up front, that's an amazing pairing. They don't concede a lot of goals. In fact, their last two games, they played against the big guns, Germany and uh, Brazil. Brazil, yeah, 2 zero, zero. Of course. The, you're also forgetting guys like Raheem Sterling, Ashley yeah. Young. Yeah, absolutely. You know, definitely, you know, England are solid defensively. We've all seen more, that. More so than before. Than ever before. And let's not forget Henderson. Uh, it's going to be difficult to score against the three lines, that's for sure, if you're Germany, right? So. Simon, you have Germany and England with Germany going through in the quarterfinals. Yeah, let's, let's really be honest okay. here. Most of us on this table... I, I feel a little tension. No, no, I mean, listen, it's all about history, but okay. it's really not... You're from it's Wimbledon, about, aren't you? Yeah, I'm from Wimbledon, but that's fine. Listen, most of us at this table really, really, really mm -hmm. would like to see England win, right? Another 1966, or even better yet, an England 5, Germany 1, that kind of thing where we can all go out on the subway and just, you know, shout and, mm -hmm. and do all the stuff because England won. Defensively, we know that, you know, that England are, so, are solid, but we have to also look at like some meaningful matches throughout history. Um, and history is on Germany's side. It is, it and is. And history is on Germany's side. 1970 World Cup quarterfinals. England lost. Mexico. Because of a dodgy goalkeeper. There's no such thing as a dodgy goalkeeper. <laughs> Mexico, Germany beat England. 1990 semis of uh, of the World Cup. In Italy. Germany again. Okay, so Simon just goes with history. I'm always going with it. Yes, That's what during he's doing. the past couple of years, goals seem to be coming from every part of the park for Germany, right? Mm -hmm. 15 different players mm -hmm. have scored in 16 different matches for Germany just last year. Yeah. So the idea of English defense, long ball, whatever, it flies out the window when, just like Brazil, Germany has goal scoring power everywhere except the guy wearing the gloves. All right, so history, facts, at the end of the day, they're all predictions, guys. We're gonna end it on Germany because we have a fantastic chef joining Mary Lou today in the kitchen, Haley, and we're gonna go enjoy and make some delicious German food. All right, guys, see you on the next episode of The Foodball Show, signing off. Let's go. Hey everyone, Mary Lou here. It's time for my favorite part of the show. I have a special guest, lovely German uh, chef, Haley. How yes. are you? Good, how about yourself? Good, I'm so happy to have you here and I'm so excited for you to tell us about all of this that oh. you prepared for us. Me too, I'm so excited for you to try these. These are all my favorite dishes and I know you're gonna love them just as much as I do. Great, so you know what, let's start. What are we preparing today? Well, today we have a ton of amazing options. Okay. We're gonna start over here, the classic mashed potatoes. Everyone Yummy. knows them, everyone loves them. We have some beef goulash over here served over some egg noodles. Ooh. That is a super good, super hearty meal. Literally delicious. This is, I can already tell this is my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pasta, anything. Me. To die for, right? Right. <laughs> so, tell me more about this dish. It is made with some chuck beef 
Okay. And you can add it with some chicken broth, paprika, some tomato puree, some onions, and yeah, you can just really cook it in a crock pot. That's my preferred method. You just throw it all in, you let it cook for a couple hours. We have a classic, the bratwurst. Also have some sauerkraut with it. It can be made with veal, it can be made with beef, but most commonly it's used with pork. Okay. So, and there's a lot of really good things you can pair it with. I really like pairing it with some potatoes. Of course, we have the mashed potatoes. That's Perfect. the best, but you could also do french fries, tater tots, or you okay. could also do like a steamed cabbage, tossed salad, or some pickled beets. And over here, we have some roulotten. It's a really good traditional German dish. It's made with super thinly sliced beef. And then you spread some mustard over top. You add in some pickles, some onions, and some bacon, and you roll it up. You tie it and then you bake it. How long does it take? Well, after you roll it all up, it only takes about 20 minutes in the oven at about 400 degrees. So not too long at all. And then we have some potato salad, another classic it, that's spread to a lot of different countries, but it is German. And then for dessert, we have some apple strudel. So, so good with My the favorite. crust. I know, you seriously can't go wrong. Why don't we take this to the table? Oh, absolutely, let's take it to the table. Hey everyone, welcome to the table. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is most of our favorite parts of the show um, and we have our chef Haley here with us. She just um, made us some delicious food. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being absolutely. here. Thank you for having me. So last year, last summer, I was in Germany in Dusseldorf for my friend's wedding, and she had like a German-themed wedding because her dad's German, her mom's Dominican. And we just did Lederhosen, and we went to like a beer garden, and we literally took so many videos of us all cheering and like breaking the glasses and saying Prost. Oh, is that how you say That's cheers? That's how you say cheers in Prost. German, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, ah. it is. Chef so everyone. Prost. Prost. Prost to you. Prost. Just describe yes. every weekend of the Dalai Lama soccer ball. Yeah, but that's all right. Breaking glasses and Made cheering. Hosen, you know. So this is a really sweet dish. And you know what's going to be sweeter is seeing uh, Germany in the final of the World Cup. Were you waiting to say that? I was. Say, I actually wrote that down. Yeah. About two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Insert here. Yeah. Is and there any unlikely duo matchup that could happen here? Germany and someone, not England, not Belgium. Like, what could it be besides that? It could be a variety of those. Mm -hmm. We're just mm -hmm. sort of predicting right now. Pray. Yeah, predicting. So predicting. That's, that's what it kind of comes down to. I think the juicier match is obviously going to be England. Mm -hmm. and Germany because there's so much history behind it. So much, yeah. And so when you sort of watch it, there's all sorts of passion that goes through it. Mm -hmm. Whoever's playing Germany, it's going to be very, very difficult. I don't think it's going to, it's not going to be that easy. I don't think no, it's going to be strong enough. Other than a prediction, I really hope, I pray, that we don't go to penalty kicks again. I don't want to see the, I think it was Euro 96, right. Germany and England penalties. I think they, it was in 1990 as well in the World Cup in the semis, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't want to see That'd that again. Fun. Yeah, I, I don't like much. penalties. There'll be a lot you know? of tears. Yeah. yeah, so uh, the fans don't. Their hearts can't handle that. It's it too happen. much. Yeah, it won't happen. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like some of the key players are going to be Tony Cruz from Real Madrid, mm. uh, Ozul, Kimmich. I think right. he had a fantastic season at Bayern. Well, he's had a great qualifying matches. I mean, the first match of the year for Germany last year, Kimmich scored a goal, and that was just amazing. Uh, but, you know, Chef Haley also mentioned her favorite player, Julian, Julian Draxler, Draxler, and yeah. I think he's going to be amazing well, in the World yeah, Cup. We've been talking about him for a couple of years now, haven't we? Julian Draxler is the player to watch, in my opinion. I only, like, on a personal note, I kind of wish that someone from a certain red team picked him up before anyone else did, but... Well, I think there's going to be a lot of, There's going to be a lot of picking up after this World Cup, I have a feeling. The well, same way... What do you mean by that? Well, we saw in the last World Cup, I mean, some of you remind me, but in 2014, it was Hamas Rodriguez from Colombia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he had an amazing breakthrough uh, World Cup, taking Colombia, right. I think as far as the quarterfinals, I think right, it was. Yeah. He was definitely and, and he got picked up by Los Blancos, Real yeah. Madrid. Yeah. So I think this year, there's gonna be several we're gonna see, including maybe a, a few Panamanian players. Let's see, it's gonna be a fun World Cup. I'm really looking forward to definitely. it. Definitely. Definitely, it's gonna be fun. Again, let's wait to the final because I if your team well, isn't there, you're going to be crying. Well, that's going to be in the next couple of episodes. I'll tell you what, <laughs> why don't we say this? Tune into the next couple of episodes, see what, who we think is going to win the well, final, right? Maybe we'll see some tears on the football show. Oh, yes. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us in another episode of the football show. And a big thank you to Bocas, which is located in Pasadena, our hairstylist. And we want to thank Pro Soccer. They help make everything possible. Go over there, check them out. 
They have a ton of gear that you can use for the World Cup, um, and you can get an extra 10% off using the code FOODBALL. Simple as that. Uh, check them out, Pro Soccer. Thanks for joining us, everyone.